Henry, here's my problem. I really would like consciousness to have some special character, some, some independence of the physical world. I mean, that's my desire. But as a, trained as a scientist, I can't uh, uh, take my wishes as, as reality. I have to question. I have to look at as a scientist. And everything that I was trained at in brain science and what a lot of philosophers tell me is that consciousness is really just a process of our physical brains and therefore is a very deterministic. And if I try to show that maybe there's some dualistic or some other consciousness is somehow independent and uh, immediately I'm hit with two problems that I, I, I come to you for, for advice. Problem one is that how can something that is not part of the physical world interact with the physical world? That's impossible. And secondly, in the physical world is a closed system. And so how can you have something like consciousness not part of a closed system? Two big problems. How do you deal with that? Well, in classical mechanics, the physical universe is a closed system. That's what it says. In that scheme of things, if that were really true, there would be no real role for consciousness to do anything. It can be there, but it's just kind of doing nothing. Well, that's and the classic uh, artifact so, or epiphenomena, that it sits there, it's caught, caught sure, but it can't cause sure, anything, doesn't do right. anything. So once you believe classical mechanics, that's where you're stuck. Okay. The question is, is classical mechanics true? And uh, up until the end of the 19th century, there was a lot of evidence that gave people, scientists, a, a solid reason for believing it was true. And therefore, you, could, you were naturally led to the idea, well, that consciousness is just an epiphenomenal, it doesn't do anything, and that's where you were stuck. But quantum mechanics, uh, the first thing it does is shows that classical mechanics is not true, it's not the full story. And the, uh, the way quantum mechanics is structured is that you have not just one process, like classical mechanics mm -hmm. gives you, but you have four separate processes Classical mechanics collapses all four into one process, whereas quantum mechanics divides them in, into f four very clearly separated different processes. And only one of them, what von, Neumann, von Neumann calls process two, the Schrodinger equation, is analogous to the deterministic equations of classical mechanics. Mm. In addition to that process two, there are three other processes involved. And the uh, one of the process, and well, a key process is what von Neumann calls process one. Now, process one is an asking of a question. The way quantum mechanics works is like 20 questions. A question gets asked, and it has to be a yes no question. And then nature gives you an answer. And quantum mechanics. Once the question is posed, quantum mechanics gives you the rules for what the statistical probability of getting a yes answer or a no answer will be. But there's a, an essential causal gap in quantum mechanics, which is the question of how is the question decided? What decides the question? For example, if I'm going to set a Geiger counter here or here or here, there's all sorts of places that I might set it. And if you look at the quantum mechanical equations, there is a possibility, there's potentialities for any of these things to happen. But only one question is asked, and uh, the way that it works in quantum mechanics is, A, this question must be asked. There's no rules in the quantum mechanical description of nature that says what this question mm. will be. When I say, is consciousness real, uh, I, I don't mean does it just exist because even people who don't believe it has any cause says it exists. I want it to, to have a causal impact, to, to, to have an impact on, on what I do and what I am. Well, that's exactly the right question because um, in classical mechanics, it has no, it cannot have an impact because everything is already fixed at another level. Even, even though the it physical. may be real, it's sure, an it's there. phenomenon. Most people think I am having an experience. There's a real thing happening. But does it do anything? But that <laughs> feeling in, in that environment would be totally uh, acausal and have no impact on what's happening. It would be sort of an artificial, uh, accidental 
evolutionary induced uh, feeling for some reason that came along. Well, but why, why evolution should induce it is a good question because it doesn't do anything. <laughs> okay. you know, usually evolution, um, things that evolve evolutionarily. For a reason. They have an effect, right? They help okay. the uh, organism. All right, so for, for, for consciousness to have an effect on the world, mm -hmm. to be causal as mm -hmm. well as just being mm -hmm. real, mm -hmm. what do you need? Well, certainly, what you don't need is classic mechanics. I mean, classic mechanics says no to that possibility. On the other hand, classic mechanics is known to be false. And if you look at the way classic quantum mechanics works, um, quantum mechanics has an essential process that von Neumann calls process one. And it's called, um, Bohr calls it the choice on the part of the experimenter of what experiment he's going to do. And if you look at the way quantum mechanics works, there's nothing in the laws of quantum mechanics that we know about that determines what that choice is going to be. Hmm. A choice on the part of the experimenter. In actual practice, the way quantum mechanics works is that this choice is a consequence of the reasons that the experimenter is doing the experiment. He has reasons, he has goals, he sets up the experiment because of some processing that's going on in this psychological realm. So quantum mechanics is built, quantum mechanics and the way it's actually used in practice is built by demanding, the, by, by filling a certain causal gap, namely quantum mechanics, in order to give predictions, there must be a question posed. The, question, the experiment has to be set up in some particular way in order to give a particular answer to some question. And that's the place that consciousness has causal impact? That's right, because the way the question is what, what question is going to be posed, there's nothing in the physical world, this world that classical physics talks about, that answers that question. And in actual practice, that question is answered by psychological process, by the experimenter saying, I'm interested in, in learning something. So he's, he's, it's a psychological process that actually enters in. And if you look at the way quantum mechanics works, there's nothing in the physical description that explains this question. So there is an opening in quantum mechanics for the injection of a psychological, the, the output of a psychological process to enter into the uh, flow of physical events. Now, I may be giving some of my old brain science bias here, but that psychological Im impact, that mm -hmm. decision to make, yes, the, yes, yes. To, to, to pose the question, yes, yes. is something that comes out of brain function. Well, that's not the way, that, that's, <laughs> that's the way it would have to work in classical mechanics. Classical mechanics, you say, why is the question this question or that? And you kind of tend to, you begin to think in terms of quantum computers and how, or classical computers of, of a classical computer can also, you know, make certain actions. And uh, from a classical point of view, it would all be just determined by the classical process. But in quantum mechanics, the quantum mechanical process that is the generalization of the deterministic laws only determines the evolution of potentialities for an event to happen. Mm -hmm. In quantum mechanics, you have this state of the universe, but it only describes potentialities. And so, and the potentiality, and there's a continuum of things that might happen. And in order to cut this continuum of possibilities and potentialities, uh, down in such a way that quantum mechanics can be used, um, you need in practice a process that asks the question. And if you look at the way quantum mechanics works, the, this asking of the question is not given by this evolution of the potentialities. This only evolves potentialities, and so all the possibilities are smeared out, and no one is favored over the others. So, so, you so have something extra. Has, that's, not try, that's not described by the quantum mechanical uh, equations of motion is needed. And in practice, that extra something is in fact determined by a psychological process. So let me see if I, I got this. We need consciousness because 
of this openness in quantum mechanics to come in to uh, ask the question, the observer needs to ask the question so that the quantum mechanical system can, can function. And that allows consciousness to have a causal impact, not just to be real in some uh, uh, far away manner, but to really have a cause on the world. My problem is, and again, maybe I'm betraying my bias and from my old brain science days, is that the consciousness itself or, or the decision or the thought to where I want to ask the question or place a Geiger counter or whatever is because my, of my brain function. So my brain function is causing this feeling and then this cause feeling is, is good. It seems like it's a, it's a circular loop that mm -hmm. becomes a causal. Mm -hmm. How do we break this loop? Is consciousness mm -hmm. independent of the mm -hmm. brain? Yeah, that's because you're thinking in classical terms. <laughs> in classical terms, Help the me. physical thing, Help me. <laughs> yeah, I, the physical thing determines everything. But if you look at quantum mechanics, this physical laws, the Schrodinger equation, only determines the evolution of potentialities. Okay. And it's another question, what, given this realm of potentialities, what question is going to be asked? The, the evolution via the Schrodinger equation, which is the quantum generalization of the laws of classical mechanics, does not give you uh, an answer to the question of, what the question is. Okay, so, so what's doing the question? What's asking the question? Well, in actual practice, the way Bohr put it, is that the quantum mechanics, you need a choice on the part of the experimenter as to what question he's going to put to nature. And what causes the experimenter to make that choice? Well, in practice, it's his reasons. He has reasons to make And that where choice. does that reason come well, from? Well, reason is something in the psychological realm, isn't it? And where does that come from? Well, that's the other part of nature. <laughs> okay. In this picture, that... you have not just the physical realm, but you say that there are also psychological realms. So you're saying agree. this psychological realm is another part of nature which is not part of the physical realm, though at least the <laughs> physical realm of my brain. That the laws of quantum mechanics deal with, uh, on the one hand, the physical evolution of potentialities, yes. and that there is needed another uh, part of the dynamical process, which is a choice of a question. Right. And that this choice of a question is not determined by the, by the quantum mechanical laws that are analogous to the physical laws, because it, those only determine potentialities. And everything in my brain runs by physical laws, the quantum mechanics, and, and, and has a potentiality. But then where, where or what is this ob, uh, observer and the consciousness of that observer if it's not part of my brain? Well, if you have two processes in nature, yes. one of them is the part that's described by the physical laws, and then there's another process that is closely connected to the physical world. And in fact, the way they're linked is the quantum mechanical structure requires actual events to happen. And each of these actual events has two aspects. It has a representation in the physical world as a certain collapse of the wave function, it's called. And it also has a representation in the psychological realm because knowledge is changed. The way that quantum mechanics works is there's the change of knowledge when you change this. Uh, and, and your claim is, is that those are two different things. Well, the quantum mechanical laws do not determine this, the choice of the process. So it's, it's not part of the quantum mechanical laws. You need another part and uh, in practice, that other part is, in fact, determined by psychological processing.